Hey. Oh, you want to see my kitchen? Thought you would never ask. Come on. Welcome to this week's video. I am going to go over my tips for creating a clutter-free kitchen. It's been two months since I did a very thorough declutter in my small rental kitchen. Things are really going well. I thought I'd share what's working for me and kind of do a little bit of a minimalist kitchen tour of what I actually have in this room and why it's so much easier to keep it clean and clutter Free. And make sure to stay until the end so I can tell you the final tip that is the game changer. Okay. Well, the first thing is an appliances check. Check yourself when it comes to your appliances. I only have three things in my kitchen that require an outlet. Before I used to have an electric can opener, a slow cooker, rice cooker. I had a popcorn machine at one point. A toaster oven, a toaster, an ice cream maker, a George Foreman grill. These are things I've had over the years that I just feel like I have absolutely no use for. All I need are my microwave, which I use regularly, my electric kettle, and my immersion blender. With those three tools, I'm able to cook all the meals that I need for myself and for my dog. Go through your kitchen and see how many appliances do you have? How many items do you have that require an outlet? I'd love to know if you wanna let me know in the comments. I realize also that I'm a single person living with a dog, but I don't need all the gadgets and gizmos. Having those three things is enough for me and for my current lifestyle. The other thing I can recommend is getting rid of duplicates. I feel like that really helped my kitchen. Maybe you don't need five spatulas. I definitely don't. I ended up only keeping one large pan, one small pan, one skillet, and then I have a large, medium, and small pot. I have one giant baking sheet, a couple of chopping boards, a colander, a Dutch oven. That's it. Kitchen gadgets, I feel like is another category that can easily get out of control. I keep all of my gadgets here in this one drawer so if it's not gonna fit in here I don't get to keep it I have a bamboo spoon and a bamboo spatula I have one knife I have a ceramic knife it's sharp enough to do all the chopping I need and then I have two smaller sharp knives a peeler for cucumbers sweet potatoes can opener a cheese grater I also use this as a lemon zester or a lime zester kitchen scissors and a bottle opener. Those are my gadgets. I also have my measuring spoons, my measuring cups, and my food scale. Check your kitchen gadgets because most things can be handled with a really good knife. It was like 20 bucks. It's sharp enough for me. I'm not Gordon Ramsay in my kitchen. I just need a good knife. And this doesn't have to be sharpened, which I like that about it. Lasts for a really long time. Grocery shopping, less, less grocery shopping. That is helping me so much. I used to buy too many groceries. That was the bottom line. I would stuff my fridge with too much stuff and then I didn't know what was in there and a week or two would pass by and it would go bad and I'd find that sad little bag of salad every single time that wasn't used and end up throwing it away. So now I just buy what I need for the next few days. So for my lifestyle that works, I buy less, I use what I have and there are times when I'm at the grocery store and I think, oh, this sauce looks really good, I should get it. But then I remember, no, you still have a pesto sauce in your fridge. You have a hot sauce in your fridge. You, got, you don't need to buy another sauce. Just use what you've got until it's all gone. And then we'll open the door to allow more sauces and condiments into your life. Boundaries. Everything in my kitchen has a home. Every single item, no matter how small or how big, I know where everything goes in this kitchen. And that has been a huge game changer. And I set things up in a way that makes sense for my brain. So I highly recommend you do the same. I use my larger drawers for a tea drawer because that makes me so happy. This tea drawer is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Highly recommended. The other drawer is my supplements drawer, and then the bottom drawer, which I don't have to access as frequently, has my foil, my parchment paper, and some of my stasher bags. Now, I'm able to keep my countertops completely clutter-free. I do like to have a bowl of fruit out just as a decorative choice. What I did to make this room more functional was add in this bookshelf. It's from Ikea, 
and I turned that into an open concept pantry. Instead of putting my dishware in the cabinets, I put all the other unsightly things in my cabinets. Pans, my bottles of vinegar, my spices. They all live up here in my cabinet now and all the pretty things are out on display on this pantry shelf and I like that. Some people may think that this looks cluttered, but for me, I like to have some design elements out. I like having the chopping boards on display and my Pellegrino or my Perrier out there and my plant, you know, it's, it all works together. To me, this is very visually pleasing and I wouldn't want a kitchen that was just completely void of any style choices or personality. What was my point? What am I even talking about? Oh, everything has a home. I know that the things that are on display go on the pantry shelf, other things go into the cabinets. My drawers are also a source of pride. Speaking of drawers, one of the things I did keep in my kitchen is a junk drawer. I don't know if I call it a junk drawer, I just say it's a catch-all drawer. Like under my sink, I keep my cleaning supplies. I also keep a little toolbox. Junk drawer has sponges in there because it's easier to access. So when I'm ready to change out my sponge for washing my dishes, I just reach in there. If I wanna grab some candles, they're in that drawer also. I also have, I know what's in the drawer. That's why I think it works. Super glue in there. I have a dry erase marker, taper candles, plastic hooks that I use to organize under my sink. A junk drawer I do think has its place in a kitchen. It's an organized, minimalist junk drawer. This is the creme de la creme. This is what's been making the space an awesome thing to wake up to in the morning, is this evening routine. I call it kitchens closed. After I've had dinner, I come in here and I do my dishes. I do my dishes. That's it. If I do my dishes at night and I shine my sink, that is a fly lady principle. Before you go to bed at night, wipe your sink down dry it out, make it nice and clean and shiny. And by doing that, it means I put the dishes away, put everything back in its place. Kitchen is closed for the night. I turn off the light, I walk out of here and I don't have any business coming back in here again for the rest of the night. And then the next morning I wake up and I don't remember that I did all those things. And I walk into this room and I'm still shocked. I'm like, oh, who cleaned the kitchen? It was me, I cleaned the kitchen guys. And it looks so good and it doesn't take more than 15 minutes. I was saving it as part of my night routine and doing it the last hour before I go to bed, but it actually works better for me to do it right after dinner when I still have just that little bit of extra energy. So by about 7 p.m., kitchen is closed. And that 15 minute ritual in the evening is keeping this space clean. We're in a good place. We, My kitchen and I are having a very healthy, harmonious relationship and I wanna keep it that way. And the deal is, as long as I do the dishes and put things back in their place, we're happy. We're very, very happy together. <laughs> I hope that these tips gave you some inspiration for creating your own clutter-free kitchen. It's not an impossible dream. Go watch that declutter video if you need some inspiration because if I could turn this space into what it is now, there's hope for all of us. I'll see you next week. Make sure to subscribe, like. It'll definitely be in the comments, so leave me a hello or any of your opinions. Bye, guys. Get in here, doggy. Good boy.